John baptized the Israelites with water. Oh, I'm not telling any of you followers of me to baptize anybody with water. Isn't that what he's saying? So video two is who in Acts 1 and 2 were told to be witnesses. Now this might surprise us all. It surprises me somewhat because I've never thought along these lines before until I really had a look at the scriptures. Because when you look at Acts chapter 1, there were 120 people, men and women. If you read the chapters, you'll see for yourselves. There were 120 there, not just 12. This was at the beginning in Acts chapter 10. I'd like to turn our attention to the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, where you see Jesus joins some disciples who were walking along the road. Cleopas and his wife. Cleopas was some kind of a relative of Jesus. We need to understand that Jesus had many relatives. He wasn't just set apart to be with Mary and Joseph alone all his life, all his childhood. And so these two were finally convinced that this is Jesus and so they returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those with them. Not just eleven. Not just the eleven who were minus Judas Iscariot. And so they returned to all the people who were there. Not just the eleven. And they, Cleopas and his wife said, what had happened to them on the road. And in verse 36, while they were saying these things, Jesus stood there. Not with the eleven, with the eleven plus. The question is, how many were the plus? Certainly 72 additional apostles who were appear in Luke chapter 10. And I have a book that shows that there were two lists of 70 apostles that were going around the churches in the early days. Now they're each is somewhat a little different but we need to understand that those kind of books were taken out of our Bibles and they all had disappeared out of the New Testament by A.D. 325. That was the end of all those beautiful books of Scripture that were lost to the church. Well, bit by bit they have been reappearing. And these are two lists. In the first list of the 70 apostles of Luke 10, Cleopas is the one who is mentioned. And in the same list, James, the brother of the Lord, or James the less or the just. This book says he was a stepbrother to Jesus by Jesus' father Joseph through a previous marriage who is supposed to have had, and I believe he did, four sons and three daughters. Now many of the women at that day were called Mary, so there can be a little confusion. You might like to write down Matthew 13, 55, Matthew, Mark 6, 3, Acts 12, 17, and Acts 15, 13, all relating to James. And in Mark, it shows that they said, the people said in Mark, Why, this is Jesus. Look, his mother and father are with us. His brother and sisters are with us. Now Barnes, the commentator, says that's a blood relative. But others would say that it was 
the sons and daughters of Joseph only. Then in this same list you have Justice, the brother to the Lord, the half-brother of Christ, as were James, Jude and Simon, through Joseph's previous marriage to Salome. Well, I don't accept that bit of Salome. So you have to do a lot of research. I've been rese I research and research, research and research, till I come to a settled conclusion that most of the time is right, but sometimes can be wrong. Then we, we go to the other list, and you find in the other list there are people like this. Simeon, son of Cleopas, who was the brother of Joseph, the betrothed of the Virgin Mary, and he succeeded James as Bishop of Jerusalem. Now the Orthodox Study Bible says he was martyred through torture and crucifixion at the age of 100. Matthew 13, 55, Mark 6 and 3. So you see that there are not only men, but there's women. There's Aphia, wife of the Apostle Philemon. Now this is history. The church had gathered in her home for liturgy. Liturgy. They'd already left the purity of the gospel. While pagans who had been celebrating a pagan feast broke in and raided her home. They took Aphia, her husband Philemon, and Archippus to be killed. She suffered martyrdom and is commemorated by the Orthodox Church on February the 19th every year. Now here's another apostle, Junia. She was a relative to uh, the Apostle Paul and a martyr. That's history. And she is mentioned in the book of Romans chapter 14. I've often preached this. I preached it in India about the women in that chapter. And there was one woman there who stood up in the meeting of pastors and she said, they will not ordain me, I'm a woman. Now I was being translated by one, one of India's top evangelists. Well, at one stage we were invited by Sadhu Shalapa to accompany him, to preach with him and another pastor he had at various meetings. And Sadhu Shalapa is a very dedicated preacher. He was one of the top three evangelists in the whole of India. And for once somebody paid their way. He did. Well, Sadhu Shalapa of course was there at that meeting and I had been preaching and Sadhu Shalapa actually stood up and said I was right and he offered to ordain that woman himself. Now that was really something for Sadhu Shalapa to do. The Assemblies of God wouldn't even uh, ordain women in India and they do today in various places and they did in America I believe years ago. So you see there has been this thing against women but here they are mentioned in the lists of apostles sent out by Jesus in Luke chapter 10. Now these people were there at the time. And it also says here in Luke, in Luke 24.33 again, Cleopas and his wife got up at that same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those with them assembled. Well, certainly it would be the 72 apostles, including women, but I say it was more. And to find that, we need to go to Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, we read this, verse 2, how that Jesus began to teach and teach, Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up and he was taken up after he had given orders through the Holy Spirit to the apostles 
whom he had chosen. One, everybody has taken it for the 11 apostles. I did. Everybody did. It's wrong. You see how wrong we can be? We follow what we hear and we don't read properly. We don't search enough. We need to search. And I have done much searching of the scriptures in these past many years. Much. If you were to go the path I have gone, it would take you years. The best thing you can do is to listen to what I say. Say to yourself, is she preaching the word of God or not? Is she preaching something new that's new to the word of God? Find out for yourselves. Have a look at the scriptures. Look at every scripture I mention. Think about it. Let the Holy Spirit open your heart. Read it. You can read. You know, many Indians are on Facebook. I say this about Indians. They're brilliant. Don't you Westerners think that they are not. I want to tell you, they excel many a pastor in brilliant thinking. But of course they need teaching too, like all of us. We all need teaching, we all needed this. We all need this word of God. But it says in verse 3 about the apostles, to whom he also presented himself alive after he suffered. We just read in Luke who those people were. They weren't just the eleven. They weren't just the, the seventy-two. They were others. He calls them apostles. And he says to the same people, do not depart from Jerusalem. Wait for what the promised is by the Father, which you have heard about from me. They'd already heard about it. Every one of them. The eleven plus the seventy-two plus the others. This is the theme of what Jesus said before he departed. For John baptized with water. Water. Oh, I'm not going to baptize with water, said Jesus. That's what it means, isn't it? John baptized the Israelites with water. Oh, I'm not telling any of you followers of me to baptize anybody with water. Isn't that what he's saying? You think about that. But you will be baptized, what? With the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. The Holy Spirit baptism is the promise of the Father. If you're not baptized with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, you haven't even begun to be filled with the Spirit. You haven't received the promise of the Father. It's missing from about 99% of the whole church worldwide. Does that mean you have to follow what that church, that, those churches do? Or are you going to follow the word of God which I have here on my cell phone? So what happens with all these people? Verse 6. They say, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They still did not understand. There was going to be no restoration ever of the kingdom to Israel. Brothers and sisters, there will never be a restoration of any earthly kingdom to any nation of Israel. Full stops. As said, not by me, by the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are preaching, there is, you're preaching a lie. You're cursed. You're not preaching the gospel of Paul. You're not obeying Jesus. You're under that curse. You're under witchcraft, actually, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Okay, you mightn't have heard that before. But the Apostle Paul said it. Why haven't you read it? You missed it. 
Now, many of us who were in the charismatic move uh, have heard of Derek Prince. I actually went to one of his small meetings in Singapore. I was not impressed. But I read his books and I listened to his television broadcasts and respected him. After all, he was a Rhodes Scholar, a brilliant academician, a brilliant scholar. That's enough to respect him. And he got baptized with the Spirit. He actually said in one of his sermons, this is witchcraft is the occult. You're under the curse of occultism. That's what Paul said to the book of Gal in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 1. It's there in English. I don't know what it is in any other language. But in our English translations, it is there. Jesus will never restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel. He said in verse 8, skipping verse 7, you will receive power and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the farthest part of the earth. He said the farthest part of the earth, not the world, here. That's going to one of the best translations we have in the Greek, from the Greek, L-E-B. To the farthest part of the earth. Now the apostles never went to the, the, the eleven apostles never went to the farthest part of the earth. But if you take that there were 120, they did. They did. Because we have the history of many of those things that happened. They certainly, the 11 apostles certainly went to the furthest part of the Roman Empire until they ceased before AD 67. But John the Apostle lived till at least AD 93. But he didn't do much traveling he went to Parthia, it is said, and he stayed around Ephesus where he lived. So Jesus is saying this to all the apostles. And after he had said these things, they were watching, the 120. Now it says in verse 11, men of Galilee, I haven't really looked it up, but Generally, when the Greek says men, it means men and women. He says, why? And of course, the women were there without a doubt. See, we thought it was only 11. There were 120. It says, they returned to Jerusalem. And verse 13, they went up to the upstairs room in the temple where they were staying. Peter and John and James and so forth. Verse 14, who was there? All these were busily engaged with one mind in prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In other words, the 120. Verse 15, Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers, called brethren in the Greek, but men and women, men and women, men and women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was one. She was an apostle. So it says, 120 of about 120, including the women, of course, but he calls them men and brothers, Greek, according to the Greek, and so forth. They were the ones given the power of the Holy Ghost. Not only for the Hebrews that lasted until Acts 10. Then the Gentiles began to come in. Now I want to say this about the 11 apostles. There were 12 originally. The 11. Jesus sent them to the lost of Israel. They never went 
to the Gentiles. Peter never did. James, that James, the brother of John, never did. He was martyred. John didn't, except he addressed a letter to Gentiles in churches, in the seven churches in the book of Revelation. None of them ever went to the Gentiles. They stayed with Israelites, with the Hebrews, because the gospel came first to Israel, first to the Jew, it says in the King James translation, and then to the Gentiles. Of course, that's the wrong translation, using the word Jew. We know that. So that puts a, a rather different perspective on things. So let us note, Jesus did not start the church with just the 11 apostles plus the other one they voted in by casting lots. Whether God honored that or not, I, I, I really don't know. I have not researched that. But it included all the others numbering about 120. They were given the task of starting the ecclesia, which is a better word than saying church. Because church makes you think of denominations of Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostal. No, we're talking about the ecclesia, as it says in the Greek, the called out ones. So we can distinguish from Acts 1 and 2 and Luke how many there were, who they were and what their tasks were. There will never be a restoration of any earthly kingdom to any nation of Israel. 